Uh, we're watching as we get things started, and uh, the plate is full in terms of uh, information to digest this week. What's most closely watched by you as we get things started uh, this Monday morning? Yeah, I think in aggregate, it's going to be the uh, inflationary numbers that we see this week. Okay. We have both CPI, PPI, not to mention retail sales at the end of the week, which really has held up the market. Uh, I think in aggregate, um, looking at those numbers and filtering it through, seeing what's really important to me right now is how uh, the most recent repricing in 10-year treasuries and how that will affect, if it will affect at all, the equity market. And so far... The equity market has looked the other way um, and fascinating. We've reached a new plateau with the biggest e event risk right around the corner. Yeah, you know, we're looking at the numbers here. CPI year over year expected to come in at 1.4%. It's been inching higher. Nothing of any real concern there. Month over month expected to come in a slight, well, down tick from last month, 0.4%. They're looking for 02 But again, nothing to be a, a major concern there. Now, uh, one thing, Larry, that I'm starting to think about here as I look at this is it would seem to me second in line here in terms of some of the focal points for traders, our viewers, and potentially you might be stimulus measures. Everybody's been kind of sitting back and waiting, expecting, but not sure when, uh, not so much a matter of if, but can you talk to us about how one of my concerns, I'm wondering if you share in this, is potential for a buy rumor sell fact. I mean, there's been so much leading into this. Ultimately, if, if lawmakers are having a hard time getting to this point and ultimately efforting this stimulus package and moving forward, what comes next? I mean, it seems like we'd be kind of stuck in this void or this lull where we're waiting for them to even begin talks about if there's more to come, if even necessary for us to do more. Some of the feds speakers well Cudlow over the weekend was pretty clear he doesn't think we need to do more right no you're right and I think I do think the way if you look at the uh the current relationship between equity markets the dollar and treasuries I, I still think there's plenty of room to move whether there's a deal or not a deal and I think that's the whole weekend I mean the EU UK they they couldn't come to a deal our deal of course for us much bigger with fiscal stimulus um, the market seems to be pricing in something that will occur, but it won't be what the market really wants. And I think there really is uh, room for big moves in the market. That's why we're seeing, you know, s somewhat elevated um, implied vol levels around most asset classes, except for treasuries, which continue to be stuck uh, near 20 year lows in, in terms of its volatility. Yeah, we've been talking about that. They did inch up a little bit, it seemed like, last week over the last couple weeks, but maybe similar to the inflation data, or obviously they're a reflection of the reflation data, inflation data, nothing really to be too concerned about rates there inching higher yet as well. Let's talk a little bit about the U.S. dollar because oftentimes uh, we talk about weakness in the U.S. dollar providing a little bit of well, tailwind or a little bit of support for the indices. It seems like with the dollar coming back off that 95 level with some of the stimulus talk kind of being rekindled, it seems like the dollar is losing some of its uh, strength again, or at the very least losing some of that bid that we had seen off that 9170 low, but still kind of range bound also similar in terms of what you were talking about rates, maybe nothing to get too discouraged about in terms of recent weakness for the bulls, but certainly the trend has been lower, a little bit of an overcrowded trade. What do you see? in terms of the greenback, Larry? Yeah, well, for the greenback, it's, it's the same story I've been telling all year. It's that, you know, when the dollar comes off, it's coming off from a very high level. And when you look at real yields and only real yields, you'll say, well, you know, the dollar is definitely overpriced. And that's why some of the crosses are acting the way they are. Some, you know, one big thing that happened over the weekend was uh, Pe you know, People's Bank of, uh, of China dropped their uh, reserve rate. On right. FX forwards from 20% to zero, that's not going to arrest the dollar's move, but it, it, it may well throw cold water on it for a while to keep the um, um, RMB from rising. But all that to say, I think a lot of that, um, look at the dollar, it really does depend largely on real yields. And in, in those terms, the dollar's overpriced, but in other terms, I, I think the dollar still has room to move. So it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. I definitely am not. I think I'm a long-term bull in the dollar. I think it's sold off from a high level. Um, it will gather some steam again, but a lot of it has to do with what happens to cross rates around the world. 
Let's talk a little bit around the world here, uh, and then we'll let you get on with your day, Larry. And, and I agree with you in terms of the U.S. dollar as far as some of that weakness we've seen off the 104 handle. Maybe nothing to be too concerned about at this point as long as it holds above those 2018 lows we saw down around 88. But uh, a big influence here over the next couple of weeks could be, let's bring up the euro currency, the British pound. I mean, these are going to be, as I've been calling them, kind of the tail that wags the dog in terms of the U.S. dollar. I mean, you've got negotiations, a big week here. I think it's the 15th and the 16th. Things are supposed to be finalized uh, for UK, uh, the EU departure. I mean, uh, what are we looking at here in terms of it? Seems like things are kind of still up in the air as we're just a few days out. Yeah, I think uh, up in the air is, is putting it kindly, and I commend you for that. But I, I was up really early looking, reading, and I don't think they're even close okay. uh, to a deal. And even if they were, you know, I don't think. Uh, it's going to go. It's, yeah, it'll affect the dollar, but I, I don't think the euro is that cheap relative to the dollar. It's the dollar might be a little bit more expensive due to real yields. But um, all that to say, I think uh, the EU, UK are really far away, even probably farther away than we are to a deal. Uh, getting something done, especially in the next 25 days or so. I mean, and, and there, always a chance for an outlier, of course, but all that to say, um, there's so many moving pieces there that um, I think they're pretty far away from getting anything done. Uh, we're hearing about how it may require the French backing down from that kind of uh, hardline approach towards uh, British fishing waters. That seems to be one of the latest kind of our most recent uh, uh, sticking points. Let's talk about the Japanese yen. I wanted to get your thoughts. I've been keeping a close eye on it, how, well, for the most part, it hasn't been providing a lot of directional conviction one way or the other. We did see it start to lift a little bit as the indices sold off. Let me just double check. That was into, started to see it rally into the middle of September, but it saw a limited follow through. We could pull the chart here. Uh, for the most part, it's been sideways. I'd imagine a reflection, Larry, of some of that wait and see type mode and how, well, I was talking at the top of the show about how Kashkari has talked recently about how some of the recovery here in the U.S. has kind of plateaued. I think we're seeing that globally as well. Yeah, I think you know, in Japan as well. And, okay. and the being a reserve currency as it has been in the past against certain crosses, it's not it has it's it's not that anymore. At least the market doesn't see it as that reserve currency as it was for years and years. And, and that could definitely change. But given the uh, structural um, dynamics that are going on in that economy right now, I think the world's searching for that next reserve currency to offset against a dollar, and clearly the Japanese yen's not that, and you can see that within the charts, you can see that in its knee-jerk reactions, quite fascinating to look at because the paradigm has shifted and shifted very quickly, so it'll be interesting to see what that next move will be for the yen.